everybody, Dustin Tibbetts, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth. How you doing today? If you've never watched one of these before, uh, check us out at Jazz Wealth. We're financial advisors, we are fiduciary financial advisors, and we take it a step further. We actually manage our own portfolios so you can see our performance, see how things are going. We don't buy mutual funds and we don't invest in things that cost you money. So check us out at jazzwealth.com if we can help you in any way. If you're transferring a Roth IRA, rolling over a 401k, let us know. We'll be happy to help you get all set up over here and uh, help you get your dough straight. Well, one of the things that we do each day is uh, help you get your dough straight by coming to this show, coming and talking about uh, things that we can do to help improve either on your investments, your personal finances, or things just in general that help teach you how to get your dough straight. So uh, we call this the dough show because anything goes. Anything that we could do to help, we'll do it. And today we're going to talk about taking enough risk with your retirement, but not just like the general YouTube videos where people go, oh, you need to make sure you're invested in large cap or something like that. I want to break it down into the numbers. I want you guys to know what it is that you have to do if you're expecting uh, or if you're investing a certain way. Now, sadly, there are a lot of people that are younger that are investing conservatively because a few things. They go, well, the market is at all time highs. Actually, as we record, as we're doing this now, stock market just hit all time highs again for 2018 uh, at this very moment. And uh, if it stays here, tomorrow will be officially the longest bull market in history ever. So uh, it is August 21st. So on August 22nd, tomorrow, uh, if the stock market doesn't fall more than 20%, then it will officially be the longest bull market uh, in history with over 300% gains in the S&P. So you have younger people going, well, I don't want to buy the high, right? And you've been saying that for years because the market's been up for years. You go, I don't want to buy the high, so I'll wait or I'll invest more conservatively and then I'll buy that dip. Uh, I promise you that's a mistake. I know some people that are deciding they're going to do that and uh, I promise you, I promise you it's a mistake, okay? You also have the younger investors that are like, I don't know, right? How do I invest? I Let's say I open an account at Jazz Wealth. What am I supposed to do? We'll guide you through it. It's actually really easy, but we wanna make sure you're investing aggressively enough, okay? So we're gonna use an example today. We're gonna use the whiteboard and sort of uh, draw some things here. now. Here's what I want to highlight. Let's say you have a goal. Anytime we do these videos, you got to have a goal. And today we're going to make it really simple. We're going to say that the end goal is a million dollars. Is that a goal you should shoot for? No, absolutely not. You individually should have your own goal. I have uh, current customers that are retired that have much less than that in their retirement accounts because they don't need any more. They never need it anymore. They have other sources of income. So don't watch these videos where people say, you need X number of dollars when you retire. For the benefit of everybody, I will say that we make those videos and so does the other uh, people that you watch online and stuff. Uh, they're making it just to give you an idea, right? We don't mean to shoot for that number, but today we're gonna do an example and we're gonna use a million dollars because it's really easy to use. It's a big number and it's fairly easy to do the math. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to say we have a 25-year-old, right? 25-year-old, uh, and that person is going to retire at 67 years of age. And this is a little bit different than some of our other videos, okay? Because what we're going to do now is say, if you are investing for a said return, how much do you need to invest on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, whatever, okay? This is where it becomes important because if you're invested too conservatively, then you're going to get in some trouble. So we're going to say, what happens if over all this time from 25 to 67, you were only invested to get a 4% return? Then we're going to do a 6% return. Okay. And we're going to do eight and 10 just to make it easy. Eight and 10%. So here's what happens. Those that know what they're doing or get help at 25 years old, will be over here. Those that do not know what they're doing or they're a little nervous about the market, they're gonna be over here. And so we're gonna kind of go through what you would have to do to get to the million dollars if either A, you didn't get the right advice or you were too scared, or B, you got the right advice and you were invested aggressively throughout the years while you could. Now, for my customers or for people that have watched this, this channel uh, kind of grow here recently. 
But if you've watched this channel, then you know there is zero to be scared about in the stock market. If you're 25, 35, 45, within 10 years left to retirement, you know that statistically speaking, zero to be afraid of. So everybody that says, Dustin, I want to invest conservatively because I'm scared of the market, I know from experience that the real answer is, Dustin, I want to invest conservatively because I'm worried I may need that money back. I don't have an emergency fund. I don't have my dough straight. I had a customer today that does not have their dough straight and it became clear they did not have their dough straight and yet wants to buy a real estate investing course and took the money out of their retirement account. I can't stop you from doing it. I, I'm, it's my job to voice my opinion, to pick on you a little bit, and that person knows who they are. But if you don't have your dough straight and you don't have enough money to buy a, re, a, a real estate course, whatever it was, um, then what happens if, for example, that course teaches you something great, and but you have no money to go do it with? So. You know, there, there's a lot of things like that where you got to have your toes straight. I'm off on a side topic there, but here we go. Okay, so let's say you do want that $1 million. You didn't know any better. And on a daily basis, you're investing. Now, I say this because we have more and more customers that have decided to do really small amounts on a daily basis. Uh, you know, a little more work on our end, but I did say you deposit, we invest. So I'm willing to do it. Um, if let, Well, actually, let's start with monthly because most people do monthly. So if we do on a monthly basis, want a million dollars, 25 years old, retire at 67, how much do we have to put in every month at a 4% return? Assuming we're not invested very well, how much do we have to put in our accounts? It's $764 a month. Ooh, that's a tough one, okay? Now watch how this changes. If you got a 6% return, now you're at 438 a month almost half, right? If you get well, if you get an 8% return, you're at 241 per month. Can you get an 8% return? Dave Ramsey says he's getting 12, 15% returns over there and nobody picks on him. But yet when I mention a 10% return, everybody gets a little little touchy about it. So, uh, hey, go go see what he's doing. So, 128 a month for a 10% return. Look at the difference. If you're invested correctly and you're getting that growth average, not every year, this is an average return over the lifetime, right? So if you're getting that growth, you don't have to try so hard to get to that seven figure number. Now, if you're not getting the growth, you're scared of the market or you're saying, I'm gonna wait for a dip and the dip never comes or it only comes real quick and then goes away, like February, by the way, then you run into some trouble, right? Now, what we suggest is that you break this up over each month. So divide it up over, I'm sorry, each week, right? So maybe it, I'll just use four as an example, right? And instead of doing every month, you do every week. It doesn't cost you anymore. It doesn't change anything. But what it does do, our studies show that if you go back to 1970, it actually shows you that you would end up with more money because you're buying the fluctuations in the market. And that's pretty cool. So, to get to a million dollars, 25 years old and retire at 67, if you're only getting 4%, if you go to one of those companies that sells you one of those mutual funds that takes all of their money on every deposit that you put in, first of all, transfer the account to us. We don't do that, right? So come on over, we'll take care of you. But there are mutual funds where if you put in $100, they take five, $10 of that before it's even invested. That's ridiculous, right? So if you end up with a lower return because you're putting this money in and they're taking their own large cut um, out of it, then you end up with 4%. That means you have to put in that much more money. Who wants to do that, right? We want to do as little work as possible to get to the biggest goal as possible, okay? So now if you were to do this on a daily basis, just for fun, let's do this. Let's say you're investing every day because you're thinking, holy cow, how am I supposed to put money in my account every day? That's got to be a ridiculous number. Well, it could be. 26 bucks, I'm sorry, 20, yeah, $26 a day if you only got a 4% return, right? For $26 a day, you could support like 50 of those like uh, animal shelters that are on TV with the dogs and the eyes, they're all like, help us out, and they play the slowest, saddest song on the planet, and they're like, for your $3 a day, you can support like 50 animals and stuff. Well, for 26, 
You could have a 4% return, a million dollars. You could just leave it all to those people, those sad little dogs. I mean, it just kills me when I watch it. Okay, so uh, at 6% returns, you're gonna end up putting in $15 a day. Not so bad, right? Getting better. But if you can get an 8% return, then you only have to put in $8 a day if you decided to do it daily. And if you're doing a 10% return, or if you could get a 10% return on average, $5 a day. So it gives you an idea. Now, some of you are gonna say 10% is ridiculous, Dustin. You can't get 10%. I can see the comments in there. You're gonna say you're, you're selling snake oil or whatever it is, but in reality, the market returns almost 11% on average per year. If you go back to 19, to uh, 19 I did the math earlier. Uh, if you go back to 19, hold on, let me get this right here for you. Uh, 1900. If you go back to 1900, the average return is almost 11%. You want to factor in some inflation there, but is that out of the question? Absolutely not. So anybody that says you can't get a 10% return just doesn't know the stats. Remember, we're all about stats here. I want to know what the actual numbers are. I don't want guesses. I don't want people's opinions. So if you ended up with an 8% return and you didn't take as much risk or you were a little more nervous, now you know. It's kind of fun to see what that is. So I uh, wanted to break that down for you. Now, let's say you go, I don't know what all this is, Dustin. I have no idea. I don't know. I just, I know I want to get to a million dollars, okay? Let's say you were somewhere in the middle because, not that your investments were horrible, but you were somewhere in the middle because life got in the way. You were investing, you were doing one of these options, you were putting the money in, and you, you had twins instead of a, a, a little girl, right? You ended up with two little girls instead of one little girl. Or, uh, you, you know, your marriage didn't work out. Something happened where it ended up where you had to stop investing for a while. Maybe you bought a real estate course. <laughs> and uh, then you, you know, you had to stop investing. So well, let's say that overall, your return at the end of the game was 6.5%. Maybe you invested at bad times. Maybe you, you know, you get what I'm saying. There was a problem that caused your returns to be lower. And that's what you ended up with was six and a half percent over the lifetime of your investments. This year in 2018, you can put in 5,500 in your IRA. Let's just call it a Roth. Okay. That's it. You can't go over that if you are under the age of 50. So you're, we're pretending you're 25. So let's say you did that and you just kept investing, okay? That's all you could do. 35, 45, 45, 60, uh, we're gonna still say 67. 65 is where we're getting this number from, but you could say 67. So $5,500, 6.5% return. Let's say, you know how on a Roth IRA they raise this number every few years? Let's say they never raised it again. And all you could do for your entire life from 25 to 67, well, 65 really, was put in $5,500, you'd still get to that number, okay? So however you wanna look at it. Some people call me and they go, Dustin, I'm doing $5,500 every February and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, you do your work, make it work for me, and I go, okay, that's fine. If they never changed a thing from 25 to 65, they'd still have over a million dollars in retirement. So just a different way to look at it, okay? So that's that. Uh, we'll also do, uh, well, that's, that's what that one is anyway. So, uh, I just thought I'd break it down for you. The return that you get is just as important as the goal. Everybody says, oh man, I want to put so much money into, uh, a Roth, right? Or I'd like to end up with so much money when I retire. And I go, yeah, yeah, but, but, but let's see how you're investing. If you're one of our customers, I can see the fund that you're in. When we run those projections, we know exactly how we're managing the fund. So we know what sort of return expectations we could use. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Five dollars a day is cheaper than Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, Chipotle for me. That's my weakness. Uh, five dollars a day is not too bad. We decided to do ten instead of five as I cut our time as needed in one million and a half. Um, so, oh, I see what you're saying. So you want to do and instead you want to do ten dollars a day. Again, going to depend on your long-term return. Uh, how you're invested, right? So the five, don't focus on the $5 a day and just assume you're gonna get 10%. Um, if you're invested aggressively enough, of course you will average that, you should be just fine, uh, but it, it depends on your rate of return. Peter says, I'm not credible because uh, you're, I'm not flashing off my, you don't like the wall? <laughs> 
you don't you don't like the like stuff. Look, I got money over here. Granted, they're like they're from Kuwait and Iran, so I'm I'm flexing some some whatever those are Kuwait money, huh? <laughs> I'll put a few euros up on the wall. Would you like that? Oh man, no, I can't do it. I'm not one of those uh, look what I got sort of kind of guys. I'd prefer people don't know. <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, that's all I have for you. Uh, by the way, the stock market hit a new all-time high today. We'll be talking about that on the closing beat 100% for sure. We will cover everything. Doc Type says, should it be a lump sum of monthly a or a monthly average in your opinion? Uh, it should be weekly. I'm the only advisor on the planet, I promise you, that is saying, no, no, I don't want all your money up front. If you have the option of putting in $5,500 a year, now we're behind a little bit, right? So, um, you know, you got from now until tax day. So you're a little behind if you're just starting, but I would say do a weekly deposit that breaks this down. If, if you're trying to put 5,500 in, divide this over however many weeks you have left to, to put the money in and do it that way. Obviously it benefits us more if you throw as much cash at this company as possible but our job is to be a fiduciary advisor. And so my honest answer is small weekly deposits. We have the study, we've done the videos that show you're better off doing it that way. Um, if you absolutely have to do it monthly or uh, over each year, that's okay. I mean, we're talking a little difference. It's $30,000 over the last 30 year window. So to me, 30,000 is a lot of money. I'll do it weekly. I do do it weekly, by the way. Um, but uh, that's what I prefer, Doc. So that, uh, just to give you the honest, best answer. Um, when loads are added, the fund performance in the last 10 years, I don't know how he does it. I just recently started paying attention to him because a lot of people ask me about what he does. I, I get the gist of what he does, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you're already client. Just want to clarify for the others. Oh, cool. Thanks, Doc. No problem. All right, so we're going to wrap it up there. We'll be back at 5 o'clock for the closing beat. Thank you so much for watching, by the way. I love the interaction. That helps us so much. Kind of, I get video ideas, and I start to get a feel for what people are confused about and uh, starting to help with there. We have a new show coming out almost every other day now. It is called uh, Fin Tips, just financial tips. Real quick, one word or sort of one answer uh, videos that tell you exactly about one subject that maybe you need help with. We're going to cover a new one tomorrow and then uh, I think one's coming out on Friday as well. Thanks guys. Have a good uh, rest of your day. We'll see you at five o'clock for the closing beat. Hit the subscribe button and the bell and all that stuff. That's all I have for you. See you then. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.